Hey everybody, okay, uh, we're going to continue with the 32X uh, gameplays that we just recently, I just recently did the uh, gameplay for Doom, um, did a little video on it, and um, just a fan of, of 32X, you know, at least for some of the games, there's some of the games for the 32X that really stood out, and Star Wars Arcade um, definitely is one of my favorites, Star Wars in itself is just an, uh, it's one of my favorite um, uh, franchises out there, and of course, uh, playing it on the uh, 32X in Star Wars Arcade was really, really cool. Um, I played the Star Wars game back in the 1980s when it came out in the arcades, and I was able to play it on the home consoles with the uh, versions on the ColecoVision, which I think was awesome. The ColecoVision version was, was sweet. Um, also played the Atari 2600 versions. Um, but the ColecoVision at the time was just really, really awesome, and that's way back in the 19. 80s when that game came out and I was able to play it on the ColecoVision just a couple of years ago because I couldn't afford a ColecoVision it wasn't part of the uh, budget back in the 80s so I was stuck playing either in the arcade or playing the Atari 2600 version but here uh, one of the uh, launch titles for the 32X back in 1994 when it was released uh, was Star Wars Arcade and uh, just being able to play Star Wars was awesome. I thought visually the game is really really nice at least for its time um, You know, I, I like it right now, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and just play it as you can see you can play either the arcade version or 32x version So I'm gonna go ahead and play the uh, 32x version um, As you can see you can also play as the gunner so you can actually play two players you can actually um, have somebody who is flying the plane, flying the uh, Starfighter and uh, the X-Wing, and you could be the one uh, just sh being the gunner and just shooting. But um, simple. Uh, again, I love simplicity, and this game is just its just simplicity. Um, it's uh, just turn on the game. Um, no, no tutorial. No you really need to, to have a tutorial here. Just turn on the game. Uh, connect the controller start playing press start and uh, j just start playing I mean um, it's just awesome that uh, 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 all you have to do is just press uh, the button to shoot and uh, take care of these guys as you can see you have a radar on the bottom so the radar will tell you exactly where things are as you can see here you get to take on the different TIE fighters and you also get to uh, try to take out a couple of these star starships what do they call them the star battleships um, the cockpit, the cockpit view is pretty. It's okay, but I actually like the uh, the uh, the version where you see actually see the X-wing, and then you can see uh, pretty much the screen a lot better. I like to see my X-wing, um, but um, this is the cockpit view. Um, just like playing it, enjoying it. Actually, the uh, as you can see the whole point of the game is really is to battle the evil galactic empire and uh, eventually get to the uh, Death Star and uh, destroy it just like in the uh, very first film um, as you can see I just shot off one of the missiles graphically the game still looks nice it really does it really really looks nice you can actually see the you can see the ships, you can see the TIE fighters as you're blowing them up, you can see the explosions, you can see your uh, lasers. The game is really, really nice. You know, it, 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 it holds up pretty good, I think. In my opinion. I'm a little biased right now because I've been uh, I'm playing the 32X and I'm enjoying my 32X with these games. Um, General Akbar. I'm trying to figure out where does he breathe from? Does he have gills? Um, getting away from the uh, thought here, but that was kind of always kind of weird to me. Um, the game is not very very long, um, so what I did was I just did a lot of clips and I just put them together so we could speed it up. There go General Akbar again. There we go. Now that looks really really nice. Look at the Death Star. Look at look at how it looks. It looks really really cool. I mean, you gotta admit that just it holds up. I think this holds up. Look how nice that looks. And I'm flying right into it, obviously. It looks really really nice. All right. Now we're going down to the surface of the Death Star. 
if I'm not mistaken, I think I battled blow up a couple of Death Stars in this. So you can actually beat the game. Yeah. I think it looks nice. Taking out a couple of towers here. Trying to get into that uh to that canyon area. Through the TIE Fighters, they look pretty cool. I, graphically, I think the game is really nice. The sound is nice. Makes you feel like you're into the you're in the actual movie. What I like to do is put my uh, headphones on and uh, just play with the headphones on, so I feel like I'm really in it. Love to have that uh, arcade feel. I'm not sure if the uh, we might. I might have to look for it if the Sega has a uh, one of the flight sticks. I'm not sure. I'd like to try that with that. R2! I mean, you can see the polygons, but to me, it, it's holding up really nice. I think so, anyway. That's my opinion. Back in 1994, when the 32X came out, I thought it was the coolest thing. But then, six or seven months later, then they go ahead and, you know, advertise for the Sega Saturn to come out. It's like, what was the sense of getting this 32X? It made no sense. The only thing I can honestly say about the 32X other than, you know, versus the Saturn and, and, or, or the PlayStation is the fact that you don't have any loading. You just put in the cartridge to start playing. That's why the N64, I think, did so well. And also the fact that it was pretty cool anyway. Don't hit the sides! I think it's holding up really nice. You can see the polygons, but it still looks nice. R2! You know, playing this right now it actually does remind, remind me a lot of the uh, ColecoVision. You can see the how awesome and advanced the ColecoVision game was too. At the time, we're talking about back in the 80s. Don't crash, don't crash. Really, really nice. I enjoy Star Wars. Come on. Where's the tunnel? Where is that? With the, where is that Achilles heel that they left in this fully functional galactic destroyer? I know I'm coming up to it. There it is. Look at the background. I mean, look at look visually. Look at it. It looks really, really cool. Again, I think it's holding up really, really well. You can see that it's a bit dated, but at the same token, I, I, I think it holds up very well. So that was the first one. So now we're going to go ahead and take on the, uh, the next mission. Yeah, you really get the feeling like you're in space and you're battling these guys. I mean, that's... Cool if you ask me. I, I just like the way it looks. The sound. Form the superstar destroyer and destroy its main engine. Oh, Akbar. Why did they name that fish Akbar in the first place? I don't get that. That's pretty weird. Alright, so we're back to uh, another canyon here. Don't hit the sides. Very sensitive. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. R2! I tell you, that robot does take a licking, but keeps on ticking. I'm really enjoying this. Finally had a chance to really sit back and we went on vacation. We picked up uh, another trifecta to back up my other one. Meaning I picked up uh, Sega Genesis Model 2, already connected to the Sega CD, CD Model 2, with a 32X already on it. So I actually was able to pick up a whole trifecta all together. And once they're together, I don't take them apart. It, it just defeats the purpose of getting it anyway. But... I think graphically the game is still awesome. It's my opinion, of course. My opinion. 
Come on. I know it's coming. But I'm, my shields are gone. My shields! It's coming, it's coming. There it is. Blast the boogie. Come on. Go for it. There's another one. Mission accomplished. Looks like I took out the Star Destroyer. I think we have to take out the, uh, the last Death Star right now. Back when the uh, Sega 32X came out, I was already into the Sega CD. I, I really like the Sega CD. A lot of people have negative comments on the Sega CD. I think the Sega CD was pretty cool. I mean, other than, than some of that loading, uh, for the most part, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the FMV did kind of like blow me away back in those days, but to be honest, it was actually the gameplay. Yeah, I the sides, man. Um, the actual games. Uh, other than the FMVs were pretty good, and I I actually liked some of the FMVs. Uh, Sewer Shark was pretty cool. I still think Sewer Shark was pretty fun, and the acting, even though it's cheesy, is pretty funny. The wifey uh, kind of turned that game over when we got it because she just stayed on it. Star Wars Arcade for the 32X released back in the one of the launch titles for the uh, 32X back in 1994. Sega was a really, really cool company, man. When they made their own hardware, they were really cool. The only problem is they kind of they, they, they messed up their own. When it came to a lot of the games, they really messed up their own uh, uh, chances. Um, and, and, and if you think about it, with Nintendo having a monopoly on all the uh, the games back in those days, they had to, they were forced to create their own first party games, and a lot of them are just awesome. Why didn't they make a? Did they make it? They didn't make a Sonic game for the 32X from what I remember. You can see the polygons, but you can make everything out really well. One game that really did not look good on the 32X was the Virtual Fighter when it came out. It looks terrible. I mean, compared. I mean, you look at it now, you can really see it did not age well at all. Virtual Fighter One, 32X looked terrible. Come on. Come on. Sound is here. Music is good. Come on. I think this is yeah, this is the last one. This game is uh It's not very long. But it's not meant to be because remember it's an arcade game. It really was made just to eat up your quarters. That's the I like it like that. You can see it better. There we go. There you go. It sounded like Lando. Was that Lando? I did it. Now it's time to get out of here. Here we go. Again, graphically, I think it looks really, really nice. I think it aged pretty well. You can actually see and make out things really, really easily. The sounds are good. And, uh, some of the voiceovers because I swear that was Lando. That definitely sounded like Lando. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Um, just a fun, fun game. I mean, it's an arcade style game. Simplicity at its best. Just connect the controller, turn on the system, and you know what? Just press start and start playing. Um, there's nothing better than that. I mean, I don't want to go through tutorials, and I know I've said it before. I rather you know just play a game man a good 20 minutes or so of, of playing a game and just enjoying uh, enjoying it instead of having to go to class to learn things you know um, and Star Wars Arcade is definitely one of my favorites um, um, I just like it I think I think that the graphics look nice again 
the sound is very nice. 32X took a lot of uh, a lot of heat for its time, um, but I think a lot of that has to do with Sega's, um, I guess, advertising at the time. They weren't too uh, hmm. they weren't too kosher, if you ask me. You know, um, why why throw out a a, a a 32X and not really support it? I think only like 40 games really came out for it, but then six seven months later, you go all out for the Sega Saturn and forget about the 32X. So everybody who spent 150 bucks to pick up a 32x really really felt slighted and cheated by sega and it really hurt sega's um standing with with the audience with us man you know you, you're just doing this just to take our money and uh with no with no regards to you know uh, what we just spent invested in you but again big fan of star wars hope you guys enjoyed the video as always i'll keep this as uh keep it retro guys Keep it retro. All the best. Bye, Yoda. Obi. Keep it retro, guys. All the best.